What is going on guys? Gamers Game here today with your Chicago Bears 7 round full mock draft. It is currently Monday, approximately 3.50 p.m. We've had some news come out today. A lot of draft news. Debo Samuel might be getting traded um, before the draft. Might be with the Jets is what it seems like it might be happening. Um, Trayvon Walker has been shooting up boards left and right. We're hearing about some names of the QBs potentially rising up in this draft. So this is definitely an eventful, eventful draft uh, week going forward. Are the Bears going to have much, much event to really be had um, this weekend? I don't really know. Um, the first pick for us is at 39. As you can see here, these are the first picks for every team in this draft. Jaguars, as we all know, I have one, Lions, two, Texans, and then you can see the rest right there for you. But man, it's going to be an interesting, interesting draft if I were to say so. Um, it's something that, I mean, there's a lot of pieces for Chicago that needs to be built upon. But I don't know if 39's early enough, so as we'll, we'll we'll do we'll do the first few rounds or at least up until our pick, um, relatively slow, and then we'll speed it up in the seventh round. But I'm feeling like Chicago might move up to make a trade here if the right players get picked. Um, Aiden Hutchinson, Derek Stingley, um, Derek Stingley is going to be well off the board by the time the Bears pick, but I don't think he goes ahead of Milan Gardner. Um, and we're, as we're seeing here, let's 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 go a little bit slower here. I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of break down what I'm saying. I don't think that's happening. I think they probably go at that point. They probably go Trayvon Walker. That I could see happening. Kayvon Thibodeau there. I can see happening. Ikeme Kamu. I think it's either him or Evan Neal at number one for the offensive lineman. Trayvon Walker to the Giants. I don't know why they wouldn't take. I could see Jermaine Johnson in that spot. Um, Malik Willis there. And I actually want to pause because I do see um, <clears throat> I do see Chris Olave's name off the board, um, who is going to be one of the Bears' targets. Now on this one, on PFF, you really can't um, you can't really see who's still on the board. But I'm gonna I'm just gonna take a quick gander. Um, so all four top receivers are off the board. It looks like. Dude, I don't think we want a Jahan Dotson. I don't think we want a Sky Moore. I don't think I don't think we're trading up for George Pickens or anything like that. Um, outside of trading up for a receiver, it would be an offensive lineman. And at this point, you still have Trevor Penning on the board. Um, you still have Kenyon Green on the board. You still have a decent amount of offensive linemen on the board. It looks like. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna continue. But if we see a run on offensive alignment, we might have to jump back in. Jordan Davis, that is a phenomenal pick. I love Jordan Davis. Beast of a player. Tyler Linderbaum, I love that guy. Hope he goes to the Bears, potentially. Jermaine John. I actually had this on my um my first mock draft, Jermaine Johnson to um the Cardinals, but every every sign's pointing that he's going high. And um Bernard Raymond. That, that makes me question whether or not I should try to trade up here with the Bills, man. Um, as you can see, 39, 48, 71, 148, 150, and 186. The Bears don't have a lot of ammo in this year's draft. And I do think we could trade one of these th two picks for some later picks. So I'm actually going to try to move up here. I believe. No, I don't think... I don't think... I don't think... I, I'm gonna let the I'm gonna let the Bills pick. I don't think they go offensive line here. They do. They took Tyler Smith, who would be another target for us. Um, I, ideally, what I want to see here is Kenyon Green. Zion Johnson just went off the board, and I, I think the Packers take receiver, but we'll see what the Bucks do. Trevor Penning, there he goes. Um, the Chiefs. I don't think they take offensive line. I'm gonna try to trade up with the Chiefs at thirty. I'm going to try to trade it up with the Kansas City Chiefs at 30. I'll let them take their first pick. I'll give them nine picks later, and we'll give them 148. Will that do it? Will that do it for us? Um, offer trade. That will not do it for us. Okay. And we'll give them a third round, a future third round pick. 
to move up nine spots and take our offensive lineman. Now, keep in mind, I don't know if our offensive lineman is going to be there. Um, I assume he will be because they took offensive line. This should be a receiver for the Packers. This should be a receiver. And they go Lewis Seen. Um, that's, that's a... That's a great pickup. Um, I don't know if that's really a need for him, but and the Chiefs take Kyir, Elam, and you see these guys right here: Jalen Petrie, George Pickens, Daxton Hill. Those are the guys that are within our range at 39 that I think are going to be there. Daxton Hill, if he's there at 39, he is my number one selection. Love the guy. Um, he is my he's my number one defensive back. Um, if we take defensive back at um, at 39, because I think he might slide a little bit. I could see him going into the first round, late first round, too, to like the Chiefs or something like that. Um, Jalen Petrie would then be my next choice. I think George Pickens would probably be my last resort. I, I do have Pickens over Sky Moore. Um, but if you look at the receivers, the receivers, the ones, Traylon Burks, love this guy. He might still be there. I hope he is. Jalen Tolbert, I love this kid. I think he will be there at 48, so we could go offensive line with our first pick. You know, we'll still be able to pick up Jalen Tolbert if nothing else is there. Jahan Dotson, somebody I love. I think he's going to potentially see that late into the first round, though. But like I said, man, I was trading up for an offensive lineman, and I told you guys which one I was looking at. Now, if I could just find him, let's start it by interior offensive line. There he is right there, Kenyon Green. And just so you know, he's he's the best available offensive lineman in general. Dylan Parham was the next guy available. But Kenyon Green, he slots right in at that 39 that we're at on the big board. Um, I love this kid. Let's go into his – let's go into him. Um, as you can see right here, you can read some of his career highlights, um, some of his stuff there. Five-star out of high school, first-round guy. We're getting him at the back end of the first round. And Green will not only be coveted for his absurd movement for a 325-pounder, but also because he started every single offensive line position except center. That is my biggest um, my biggest um, desire to get him right there. I don't know what we're doing with Cody Whitehair, if he's playing center, if he's playing guard, if he's playing tackle. I don't know about that. Um, obviously, we just lost James Daniels. And we, we have a lot of... Question marks on that offensive line. Sam Mustafer, is he going to be the guy? I don't know. But getting someone like Kenyon Green, and, and let's, let's let's look here too. Um, you can see uh, about his percentage of snaps. He played everywhere for this team last year. Um, primarily, he was on the right in his freshman year. But over the last few years, he's been on the left side. So being able to be versatile like that, being able to switch from side to side, um, at everything except center and having somebody like Cody Whitehair um, that can play center. I think this is probably the move for the Bears here. Um, you had to trade up a little bit. You targeted one of your guys, and I think Kenyon Green is going to be the selection here if we do trade up. Um, that's what I wanted to do right here because I, I think that might have screwed with the Bengals pick here. I don't think the Bengals go Arnold Ebikite. Um if the right things happen for him. But we just took off the best offensive lineman for the next 20 or so picks. We jumped a team that needed an offensive lineman. I think that's going to be crucial if the board pans out as it does. If Trevor Penning's still there at that, when once the Chiefs are on the clock, I feel like we don't necessarily need to be trading up because I think I think what we're going to see is probably Penning, Kenyon Green, Tyler Smith, and Raymond all going within the same area. Zion Johnson is somebody I do value a little bit higher than those guys. Um, because Raymond Smith and Penning, I believe, are a little bit more projects. Um, I do love Zion Johnson, very versatile guy himself. Kenyon Green, though, phenomenal selection there at number 30 for the Bears. Let's see what, maybe they won't grade it as a phenomenal selection, but I would be more than pleased with that selection. Um, Traylon Burks, as I told you, that was somebody we were going to target. Um, Ritter, makes sense. Travis Jones, I love this guy. The problem is I don't think there's a big neat George Pickens. That, that one stings a little bit. Daxton Hill. Um, Dax Hill, I think, is going to be a phenomenal. Boye Mafe, they're at 38. Kyler Gordon. Actually, I'm going to pause it here. At 39, 
I would not be mad at Kyle G Gordon. He is a phenomenal player. Um, phenomenal, phenomenal player. Um, Kenny Pickett. And then Jalen Petrie. The, the Seahawks are just killing it. Christian Watson, not somebody I'm too thrilled of. He does have drop concerns. David Ajabo, I like. He's going to have to come back from injury. Running back, Kenneth Walker, doesn't make much sense there. Quay Walker, love the kid. I don't know if anybody really needs a linebacker like that. No. All right, so this has to be a receiver more than likely for us. Um, and as you can see, Tolbert is probably a little bit out of the range here. Um, I love Kingsley. I love Kingsley a lot. I think he's going to be a phenomenal player. I just don't know if this is his range. Um, I've had Abraham Lucas drafted by the Bears in countless drafts. Um, you look at this guy, man. He is a beast. He's a 6'6 beast. Fourth round bottom line, which isn't too thrilling. Fairly good season last year. Primarily played on that right side. It is an option. It definitely is an option. And if we didn't trade up for Kenyon Green, he probably would be the selection because at that point we probably would have had... At 39, at 39, we would have probably, we probably would have traded back, to be fair. But um, I, I don't want to take Toll Bear just yet. Um, so I'm actually, with this pick, we traded up to get earlier. Now we're going to trade back, and we're actually going to trade, uh, do I want to trade with the Cardinals? I think Toll Bear might be a little bit out of that range. I don't want to trade past the Chiefs, but I'm going to have to. I'm going to go for 55, trade up a few picks. Can can we get 201? Uh, I don't like that. I don't like that. I want something in the hundreds. Buffalo, this is a more... This is, this is giving up a lot more. Can we get it done? We do get it done. Okay, so we get another pick back in and route the fourth round, something like that. And this might be a receiver here. It's not Jahan Dotson, Brees Hall, okay, Drake Jackson, I'm fine with that, Trey McBride, I love that kid, I don't think he's going to go as high as he should, um, Logan Hall, phenomenal pick, Josh Pascal, I think he's going to be solid in the league, Leo Chanel, we need one more pick, man, Abraham Lucas, one spot out of what we were going to pick, but we're going to take Jalen Tolbert. Um, love this kid out of Southern Alabama. I love what he can bring to the table. Very versatile. Um, I didn't even really get to <clears throat> show you there. Um, 6'1 kid. Third round projection. Only a two-star man. But here's some of his career highlights. Here's some of um, his high school stuff. But 82, man. 82 overall grade for PFF. 82 receptions last year. 130 targets approximately. Eight touchdowns, about 18 yards of reception. This guy's going to go make you some plays. I love this kid. I think he's going to be solid for everybody. Um, I'm looking for. I, I really want, if, if I get to pick one of those non-top tier receivers, I'm talking about the top four. The the, the Jameson Williams, the um, Drake Londons, the um, Chris Olaves, and the Garrett Wilsons. It's not them. I am perfectly happy taking Jalen Tolbert. Um, I'm not in love with Christian Watson. I'm not in love with Jahan Dotson. I'm not in love with Sky Moore. I'd rather have Jalen Tolbert. And I think you can get away with trading back a little bit for him. And Roger McCreary is somebody I wanted to take because I think we do need um, I think we do need some help in the secondary. But he was not on the board for us there. Um, let's see what the Matt Corral goes, Dolchik goes, um, DeMarvin Leal, first round prospect at one point goes, Chad Muma, John Mechie, and the Broncos select, who did they select? Cam Taylor Britt, corner. He's definitely a target for us at 71, Christian Harris. I love this kid, Luke Gadecki. I think he's a beast. He could. I think he could slide through late first round, early second round, because he is a beast. Tariq Woolen out of um, Texas Southern, or uh, Texas San Antonio, and this right here to me screams secondary for us. 
love Kirby Joseph. I've seen Kirby Joseph play in person many times. Illinois fan. We already have been over that many times. Um, Marcus Jones, I like him. Do I love him here? I don't know. I love Cordell Flott, especially if you can get him in that, that fifth round. Tyson Anderson, somebody I like around that sixth round, fifth round, something like that. Kirby Joseph is somebody I don't think makes it to our next selection. And when you think of the safeties on the roster, you think of Eddie Jackson. And I don't think you really think of anybody else, to be fair. Um, let's let's pull up the actual roster, because it's been a minute since I've looked at our actual roster. Um, after free agency or whatever, it's all said and done. Our safeties are... I think it's pretty much just Eddie Jackson, DeAndre Houston Carson. Oh, and to Sean Gibson. Sean Gibson's not somebody I think is a long-term guy. Um, you need defensive back help. Kirby Joseph right here is a ball hawk. He'll go get you the ball. Um, Marcus Jones is definitely up there. It's somebody I would consider um, if they want to bring him up. But that right there, man. I don't. Do I want a slot corner or do I want somebody that's going to go make me big plays? And Kirby Joseph, you look at his, you look at him here. He's a little bit taller, ball hawking safety, long arms. This man is a beast, man. He was picking off everything last year. Three star, third round projection here. Um, a little bit here on his um his tape or whatever. Um, we're not gonna watch his his action or anything, but as you can see, highly rated safety. Didn't really play the last two years before then. But when this guy played, man, he was making big plays. Um, I don't think it shows here, but he actually was one of the nation's top um, intercepting leaders. Um, phenomenal stuff from him. Loved him. He's he's lined up all over the place. You got him in the safety boxes. You got him in the slot. You got you can play him anywhere. Um, Kirby Joseph's my guy here. And then we get the Seahawks, Cameron Thomas. Alec Pierce is somebody I think the Bears could target at 71. Dylan Parham, I don't think we target him if we go um, early with the offensive lineman. Um, Sam Williams, I don't think we're really in play. Darren Kennard, once again, um, somebody I think we could potentially be in play, depending on what we do with that first pick. Kingsley, man, I love Kingsley. I just don't see a need for him. Calvin Austin, I love that kid. I think he's going to be special. Brian Asamoah, phenomenal linebacker. I don't think he's great this early, though, because the linebackers don't really have that much say. Brian Cook, there's the safety they had projected above our guy. I think here, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to commit to the corner. And if Marcus Jones, yeah. If Marcus Jones makes it one more pick, I just think we got to take him. Um, I don't think there's anybody in this draft that's better than Marcus Jones at this point. At that in the defensive back role, the problem that concerns me is his height. He he got away with it in in college. He he held him pretty low, man. This guy, he he was up here in the fifties, sixties, and then now he's down here in a little bit around there because of his height. You can put him on kick returns. I, I'm not in love. I'm not in love with his size, but. I think he's the best available player for for us right now. And I'm going to take Marcus Jones. And now we're going to speed it up a little. Sorry about that. We're going to speed it up a little because we have a pick and about 50 more picks. We're not going to speed it up too much. We're going to still look and see what Jared goes Jalen Armour Davis. I think he could be a potential pick for us. Cordell Flott, they took him. I love that kid. I think we could have potentially took him at 148. I mean, you have Dobes. Let's see here. Calvin Austin, somebody I like. Kobe Bryant, someone I like. Terry Smith, I think he's going to be solid. Thayer Mumford. And now we have zero need for Tyson Anderson. I did say I would like him somewhat, maybe. Um, Joshua Williams. I they, they, They're not going to show you much on this kid. Um... He, he played at Pembroke. He's just not going to have much to say. But he does project, at least, to be somewhat versatile. Um, man, then we get... I don't know what we want to do here, man. Because I think... 
I do think we draft one more offensive lineman and one more receiver, but I don't think this is the time for receiver. And then we took Kenyon. And if you remember, Kenyon at 30, he's a guard. Um, so right now I'm thinking either center or you get a tackle. And I love Leviticus Smith, man. I love this guy. Look at him. Look at look at look at this kid. He he can play both, primarily at that guard position though. I don't I don't know if that's what we want. Um, Zachary Thomas. Take a little bit of a look at him. Big guy, big rating. Love tackle. Played a lot of it. Played both sides. Um, Zachary Thomas could be the guy here. Um, right now I think I'm leaning Zachary Thomas. Matt Walzaco. Um, he's a pretty solid big guy too. Um, but he hasn't he hasn't shown that versatility to play both sides, and I think that's probably what's going to lead me in the direction here, Zachary Thomas. Um, just for just for um y'all to see here. You, you do see guys like Ezidio going, um, playing all over the place. Jason Poe, I believe, has also played some other spots. Yeah, he's played a little bit on the tackle, not very much. But, I man, I, I really love Levitic, or Lissidus Smith. I really do. I, I want him badly in this draft. I don't think it's the smart move, though, especially if you trade up for Kenyon Green. But I do think the smart move here is to take Zachary Thomas. It might be a little bit early for his average draft, but you can't look at this man and tell me that he isn't going to pan out, man. One of his worst games was almost a 60, which is fairly good, to be honest. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to draft him, man. He's played on both sides of the ball. And now we get a pick again. I'm not in love with this pick, man. I, I do I do think we do draft an interior defender. But I, I definitely do prefer Curtis Brooks. Um, Noah Ellis is somebody that I've also looked at, and I think he's going to be solid. Haskell Garrett's somebody that I've seen play. Well, I think he's going to be decent. But I think our best call to action here is to actually trade down. Do I want to trade down with the Rams? I don't want to move too far and potentially miss on the receivers. Can we get... That doesn't have a chance of going. How about that? Can, can we get down 25 picks? I had two, 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 two picks in the 200s. They don't want to do it. And then I'm not making a trade with them. That's simple. That's simple. Do the Ravens... They don't have them. Cardinals now. None of that works for me. Let's see if we can orchestrate something with another team here. I want to move around, but I want to go before 170. Let's see if we can get the Bills, maybe? Can we get, can we get that? No. Can we get that? No. Do the Titans got something they want to give us? And then we can trade... A six rounder, no. We can trade a seventh rounder, no. A future six rounder. There we go. Um, we're not gonna worry too deep about semantics here. Um, I I think we are potentially in position to trade this pick because it is right after our uh, last pick. We're not going to think about too much about what this trade entails. I think we could do something similar. I, th I think that our value might be a little bit better than this, to be honest. But we're just for for the sake of the video here, we're, we're doing it the way we just did it. Matt, well, ah, if he was there again, I was going to take him. Wild Seco. Ah, man, they take, they're leaving Joshua Williams here, man. And I, I, I want to take him, but I just can't. Bring myself to do it, man. This is the guy I want. I want, especially if we, if if we go um. Tolbert, I love Devin Tompkins, man. Look at this kid, 104 receptions, beast, beast. Problem is, the slot. Um, Charleston Rambo, bigger guy, six one. 
I don't know what you do because I don't think Jalen Naylor's too crazily huge. Yeah, he's not. He's not big. Um, I think Mal- Mac Mackay Poke is. So yeah, he's six three. Tyquan Thornton. He's big. He's fast. I. I I like the guy. I do like the guy. Don't get me wrong. PFF hates him. Hates him every time I draft him. They hate him. Um, and once again, I don't know if 169 is right for him. But what I do know is I think we can go defensive interior here. And maybe edge also. We did lose Cleo Mack. And we could also potentially... Uh, let's leave it at that. Let's leave it at that. No. I mean, Curtis Brooks is ideally our guy here. I think it's probably going to end up being Curtis Brooks. If we want to look, if, if you guys want to look at him, 6'2", 280. Um, fairly good there. You can see he's played pretty much almost anywhere you can play. He's more so in the gaps, though. This man, I he, he had a good year last year with the sacks on a better team. He can get to the QB a little bit. I just... I, it's, it's not a high-value pick here. It's not a high-value pick. It's just something, a position of need, in my opinion, going forward with the loss of guys like Eddie Goldman. Um, it might not be the best pick for everybody's um, spot here, but it's the one that I think is what we should do um, based off who we lost in the offseason. Javon Heli is somebody I like. The problem is every time I take this guy, they hate him. <laughs> they hate him. Um, as you can see, though, fairly well rated, fairly well rated. Um, but I don't think I'm gonna go with any any receiver here. I actually think I'm gonna finally go back in, and I'm gonna double down, maybe, or well, triple down, I guess, on a potential lineman. And I I'm, I I don't know if I can keep letting his U to fall. I like him. Can play both sides on the right, on the left, and when I think about this team, man, we want somebody that can be a little bit versatile. And I think right now it's Joshua Zudi. I think that's who we're gonna take. <clears throat> that means we have about two more picks. There goes Makai Poke, who is gonna be in the running here. I do want a particularly larger receiver. Um, I don't want to tight end. No. Josh Johnson is not that large. He's pretty, pretty much just a slot receiver. Um, can you, can you see that here? Can you, can you see what he played? They, they don't, they don't have his, his deep analytics or anything like that. Javon Heli, I think is somewhat going to be in the running here. Charleston Rambo, Eugene Dixon. I could see it being the case here. He's got some upside, big numbers from him. 70 receptions, somewhat of a jump ball threat. Problem with him here for me is level of competition. You can see a lot of these teams aren't really particularly good football teams. But we had nothing to lose here, man. I'm going to take Dejean Dixon out of Nickel State. We, ha- we do have our guy, in, um, Jalen Tolbert, and we also have Darnell Mooney still on the roster, so I'm not too worried about that. Um, and I think Edge and, and Linebacker are in play here. Um, Adam Anderson, I, I, I just want to see if this, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he got in trouble. This guy, on all accounts, is a phenomenal player. He is. Um, problem is, he is in some trouble, and I don't know if he is out of that trouble. I actually haven't heard much about Adam Anderson recently. Um, let's see here if I can find something quickly on Adam Anderson. Judge denies motion to dismiss rape charge against UGA linebacker Adam Anderson.
I, I yeah, I don't know if he's gonna be. The thing with Adam Anderson is, if you get him, he's a beast. If he if he's cleared of charges, this point in the draft, it's a phenomenal selection. It's a phenomenal, phenomenal selection. This guy is going to be up there as one of the better linebackers, Ed Rushers, whatever you want to call it, in the league. But I don't know if he's going to get cleared. But right now, we're sitting at 219. I don't see anybody that's jumping off the board to me. I'm going to take Adam Anderson. Um, like I said, if he is cleared, it's a steal. If it's not cleared, it's 219, and you have an out with him, basically. You're not committed to him. Um, did I just see Jolly? There's no way I left out Jolly. It did take Sean Jolly. Wow. Doug Kramer, she out of Illinois. Devin Tompkins. Man, I don't know if they're going to like that Adam Anderson pick. I don't know if they're going to like it, and I don't know if a lot of people are going to like it. It is a pick that has consequences. That is without saying. Kenyon Green, they like it. They like it. They gave it a B. We traded back. Jalen Tolbert got an A-. minus. Like I said, I love that. I love that for Jalen Tolbert. Uh, Kirby Joseph, they weren't as in love with it as I was. Marcus Jones, they loved it. I wasn't necessarily so high on it. Zachary Thomas, they they somewhat were okay with it. Curtis Brooks, they weren't a huge fan of. Yeah, towards the end, they did not like it, man. They did not like it towards the end. Curtis Brooks, in my opinion, feels a need that we're going to address. We just lost the key mix. I think we go get a defensive end or an interior defender. Um, Joshua Izudu, um, they like it. They like it. I like it. I think him and Zach Thomas are probably two of my favorite late round selections here. Um, I like I like versatile offensive linemen. I think that's what they bring. Dejean Dixon, they weren't a big fan of it. I think it's a smart move getting a jump ball receiver, a six three receiver, um, especially with somebody that's not the hugest play. I mean, I think Jalen Tolbert is six one, but he's not the biggest man on the field. So I think that's smart to take out. Here, or maybe they do go Devin Tompkins. And then Adam Anderson, at this point, like I said, I have, I mean, there's more questions than answered with Adam Anderson, but at this late in the game, our last pick in the draft at 219, where are we going to find a star? We might as well take the gamble on somebody that was a top 20 player at one point. If he gets cleared of his charges... He gets cleared. If not, you're not committed to him. You can you can easily you can easily uh, cut him. You can do you can do whatever. But I think this is the draft right here that I believe in the most. Because um, these are two guys right here that I've identified at the top of my board. Every I mean, usually I don't get Kenyon Green because I I like sitting at 39. I don't usually trade up. And when I do trade up, I trade up for somebody like in a lob there, Traylon Burks or something like that. But I think Kenyon Green is probably going to be the primary target for us, or at least should be. Jalen Tolbert, like I said, is my favorite receiver for us to get um, with what we have without trading up. I think it's the smartest um, situation for us. Um, Kirby Joseph. I love the pick. It adds another safety back there. It lets you potentially get rid of um, Sean Gibson <laughs> next year or something like that. Marcus Jones, smaller guy, but he can get in there and he can be the work in that slot next to um, Jalen Johnson. Um, Zach Thomas, I think he has potential to come in and give a, at least a run at the starting job at camp um, with how versatile he can be. Curtis Brooks is somebody I think will get playing time because um, we don't really have anybody all that special in the interior side of the defense. Um, Joshua Azudu, I like him. I think he can go in and potentially compete at camp. I'm not expecting him to have a starting job. The only guy I really expect to have a starting job on the line is Kenyon Green. Um, then Dejean Dixon, a little bit more of a progress guy. I kind of think he's going to be something around 
what we, I, I don't even really have a good comparison for what we've used in the, in the last few years. Um, somebody that's just going to come in in certain situations. And Adam Anderson, very, very high boom, very low bust potential here. Because, I mean, even if he doesn't hit, you're not investing many resources into him. Um, and then here's what the entire first round looks like. We can break up, we can break this down a little bit. Um, tomorrow I will be posting my first round, but today we're talking about this first round. Aiden Hutchinson, I think, is probably the consensus, but today we have a lot of things changing, and the things that are changing are saying that potentially we will be seeing Trayvon Walker go to the Jaguars at number one. And the odds are actually shifted to Trayvon Walker at number one. So, we could see Trayvon Walker or Aiden Hutchinson here. I don't think Kayvon Thibodeau is going to be in play. Um, Trayvon Walker and Kayvon Thibodeau are in play there. Or if they go Trayvon Walker, Hutchinson and Thibodeau are in play there. Um, either way, I think Trayvon is the only player. Trayvon and KT are the only two that can make it to three. Hutchinson won't make it past two picks. So this is either Trayvon, this is um, Thibodeau, or this is Sauce Gardner. And I think Sauce Gardner has a good shot at going there. Same thing here, Sauce Gardner is in there, Ike McCom was in there, Evan Neal's in there, KT's in there. Um, they're, they're, they're definitely, Trayvon Walker, maybe. Um, they definitely don't see a Jermaine Johnson there or anything crazy. Both of these teams should probably go offensive line, if I were to guess. Um, they might go Malik Willis. Um, Giants right here, this makes sense. I could see it being Jermaine Johnson if, he's off, if these guys are off the board. Um, they probably could go Malik Willis here if they don't trust Daniel Jones. Maybe Kyle Hamilton. I don't know what they do. Um, this could be Malik Willis's spot. This could also be a receiver. This could be a whole lot of things. Falcons just suck, if we're being honest. Um, the Seahawks, I could see this being an edge rusher. Jermaine Johnson, Garrett Wilson makes sense to me. Um, Malik Willis, maybe. Kenny Pickett, maybe. Um, receiver, I fully expect this pick to either be used to trade for Debo or for a receiver, whether it's Jameson Williams, Drake London, Olave, Garrett Wilson, whomever they think is number one. Washington, I could see them going O-line personally. Um, but Drake London makes sense. It feels another guy next to Harry McLaurin. This one just feels like a best player available. I'm not going to complain too much about it. Devin Lloyd to the Texans doesn't make much sense to me. I think at this point, when you're looking at how the board's going, and you see Trent McDuffie, but you know who you don't see? And I don't even know where he is. Where is he? I'm looking for a corner, and I'm not seeing. Oh, Stingley. I, I, yeah, because the giant, or the Lions took Stingley. I was just like, where's Stingley? I think Stingley's in play here. I think potentially McDuffie's in play here. Or here, my bad. Not here. I mean, I think they're both in play for both of these teams. This just makes sense. Um, what did they take? They took Sauce Gardner, so they don't need a corner here, I guess. Um... I don't know. I don't love. I don't love the linebacker at thirteen for them. Um, Fourteen, Devontae Wyatt. That makes sense to me. I could see it being Jordan Davis too. Um, Eagles, Trent McDuffie. I could see this being a receiver also. Whether it's Alave, maybe um, Burks, maybe I don't know. Malik Willis. I could see that. Um, if they don't go, if they don't go quarterback. I think they probably go offensive line. Um, Andrew Booth. I think that's a smart pick there, especially. I mean, Jordan Davis is probably who I'd say I would have them taking. With who's still on the board, that's not who they have taken them. Um, the Eagles, I don't like linebacker there. I think you need receiver. I think you need corner. I think you need offensive line. I think you need a lot of things before you need linebacker. Um, Chris Olave at the Saints, that's a brilliant pick. Um, Malik Willis is on the board. I like that for I like that for him, man. That's a phenomenal pick. Um, Carl Loftus, best edge rusher left on the board. Bill Belichick makes sense to me. One of the best offensive linemen on the board. Seen a little bit of a slip. I could see this guy being a top 10 talent at the end of the day. He's just a little bit smaller than everybody um, wants him to be. Jermaine Johnson, I think, is 
probably top 15 bound. Um, but if he ends up here, makes sense to me. Bernard Raymond makes sense. I think they go offensive line. I think Tyler Smith here is very, very doable. Fan Johnson here is very doable. Pinning here is very doable. That run I could definitely see happening. Um, Louis Cien, I don't know if that's if that's the right spot for him. Kair Elam, I think that's definitely in the play for him. Kenyon Green, I think, will go in the back half of the first round. This might be Daxton Hill. This might be uh, one of those one of those receivers you're not thinking of. Um, Traylon Burst, maybe. Maybe that's uh, Jahan Dotson. I don't know. Arnold Ibikite, I think this guy is going to slide into the first round. I've, I've been hearing a lot of good things about him over the past few days, so I think he is going to end up finding his way into the first round. And then Traylon Burks. I don't see how Traylon Burks falls out of the first round, but if he is at 32... So, I would trade up for him, too. Um, anyways, thank you guys for watching. Um, the Bears mock draft, there will be a mock draft tomorrow, which will actually be Wednesday, because I'm recording this Monday, but it's going to be Tuesday by the time you're seeing this, which means I'm recording my mock draft on Tuesday. You're going to see it on Wednesday, and then the draft is Thursday. Um, and I probably will do a um, review of the first round um, right after the draft. Anyways, thank you for watching. See you guys next time.